Hey everybody, it's your favorite gentleman, Marcus Norman of Gentleman Style Podcast Show. And today you all are in for a very special treat. I have Mr. John and Mark Cronin. And they are here today to deliver a very powerful and impactful message and share their story on how they got their business and, and are able to change lives of other men and women and young girls and young boys who suffer from disabilities in their country and feel left out and feel um, forgotten about. And so stay tuned, stay with us, stay engaged. You won't want to miss a second of these two powerhouse speakers. If you don't want to miss this, stay with us. Here we go. Hey everybody, it's your favorite gentleman, Marcus Norman of Gentleman Style Podcast Show. And today I have Mr. Mark and John Cronin. Mr. Mark is a co-founder along with John's Socks, a social enterprise with a mission to spread happiness. His Their leadership has demonstrated that pursuing social goals, people with differing abilities can achieve and give back and overcome making goods and products and services for everyone alike through their giving and through their kind heart. These men have a true heart of gold. This family is incredible. Mark advocates for the rights of differently abled people. His advocacy work has seen Mark testify before Congress twice speaking at the United Nations and making numerous trips to the Capitol Hill. Mark is sought after as a speaker, having spoken at events across the U.S., Canada, and Mexico. Mark is part of the U.S. State Department Speaker Bureau and the CEO Commission for Disability Employment. These men are impactful. These two men are amazing. Please help me welcome to the stage the incredible, the amazing, Mr. John and Mark Cronin. Wow. Wow. What a welcome. Yes. Thank you so much, Marcus. Thank you. We are so glad to be here. I'm so grateful. I am so glad to have you both, gentlemen. Thank you for joining me on Gentleman Style Podcast Show. This is powerful, powerful, powerful. You guys are a dynamic duo and a team of entrepreneurs, and you guys inspire me. I've watched your story for a long time now, and it is a pleasure to have you. As father and son... Who had and who has a Down syndrome? How did you build? How did you guys build a ten million dollar business? Well, we didn't do it overnight, um, so maybe we should just share getting started because you know I know a lot of people think about starting a business and are not sure where to start, and we could share ours, which started out of necessity. Um, was back in the fall of 2016. Where were you, buddy? Uh, I I entered a Huntington High School. Gonna, gonna be my, be my last year. He was in his last year of school. And here's something you may not know, Marcus, or your listeners may not know. In the United States, if you're diagnosed with a disability, you can stay in the public school system until you turn 21. But after that. They're going to say, as they did to you, get out. We've had enough. <laughs> right? Really? And, but this is known frequently as the 21-year-old cliff. Because when you're in school, if you have a disability, all of the services, all of the programs are right there in front of you. And someone else organizes all that. But when you're done with that, you're on your own. And in some states like New York, Massachusetts, Illinois, they have lots of programs. In other states, Florida, Texas, they don't have any programs. And even with the states that are programs, it can be difficult to find something. So John was in his last year of school, yeah. like everybody else, trying to figure out, what am I going to do next? I did. I, I've been looking at job program in school. I don't like the up that I don't like. You didn't say anything he liked. 
And unfortunately, for people with a disability, there aren't always good options out there. Right. But Marcus, John here, he is a natural entrepreneur. You said, if I don't see a job, I won. I, I said, I want to make one. I want to create one. You create one. And then would you tell and me? I said, I want to go to business with my dad. A nice father and son business. So, that's pretty cool, right? John that is. Three, he says, Dad, I want to go into business with you. And now I have three sons. This is one I can work with. Yeah. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> so, um, but then we had to figure out what were we going to do together. Right. John, he's got a head full of ideas. <laughs> yeah. What was your first suggestion? Uh, I just said a fun store. And I said, I'm going to pay good looks. Yeah, pay with your good looks. Let's have a fun <laughs> store. And I say, what are we going to sell in the fun store? He said, I don't know. It'll just be fun. Yeah. <laughs> so that wasn't going to work. What was your next idea? Next idea of food truck. I have an idea from the movie Chef and John Favreau. Uh, the movie about a father and son bonding over a food truck. A, 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 a week of- Which sounded like a good idea. Right. And we were having some fun thinking, what could we sell? What would we make? And here's something you may find out someday if you want to have a food truck, Marcus. Everybody will tell you what you should make. And you got to tell them, get your own food truck. But sure. we wound up running into a problem. We can't cook. Yeah, we can't cook. <laughs> <laughs> so, but then, right before Thanksgiving, John had his eureka moment. I did. I want some crazy socks. Why socks? It's fun. It's colorful. It's creative. Oh, always let me be me. He had worn these crazy socks his whole life. We used to drive around looking for them. Yes. Right? So we figured this. If John loved these socks that much, surely other people would too. So he said, let's go try it. And that was really it. You had the name. I got a name. You I, had the idea I, I to sell through the website. A website um, a desert desert. We, we built the website. Right. We got some inventory and said, here we go. And what day did we open? We opened on Friday, December 9th, 2016. And we all we wanted to do was test the idea, see what would happen. Right, buddy? Right, yeah. So that's how we got started. The first month, really two weeks to Christmas, we shipped 482 orders and had $13,000 in revenue. And, and we knew we could make this work. It was pretty good, right, buddy? I, I feel like it, you know, but, but starting off, we were bootstrapping. We had no outside financing, which meant you had to make do with what you had. So the only marketing we did was to sell on Facebook. I mean, you know, set up a Facebook page. And I took out my cell phone and we made videos. And who was in the video? I am. I talked about suck, 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 more suck. And those videos spread. Those first orders, many of them were local, which made sense, right? We lived in Huntington. He went to Huntington High School. We had a temporary office we were using there. So how did we deliver those packages? Our home deliveries. We did home deliveries. Wow. So we put in every package. I think you know, and Kennedy, I, I can't, I, I, I wrote. Right, he'd write a handwritten thank you note. We'd I drive did. around. He'd knock on doors. There were some funny moments, right? <laughs> Sometimes like 10.30 at night, people are peering out their window, who's at my door? We're lucky nobody answered with a shotgun, right? right. Um, but we had customers, you know, what were they doing, right? Right. How'd they respond? I did love the sock and I spread out the word, like a Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. They would take pictures. We had some customers calling up 
and placing another order just to have John come back to their house. Or they would have the whole family there to take pictures with John. Right. Um, so we learned, right? You learn by doing. We we learned a few things. One. One, a people want to buy socks. They want to buy socks. Two, Two a people want to buy socks from me. They like the idea of John starting his business. They're related to John and his love of socks. They're related to the fact that from day one, we pledged 5% of our earnings to the Special Olympics. They like the personal touch. And something that surprised us, we heard people literally on the second day telling us how inspiring and empowering it was particularly from families with a child with a different ability because they saw it giving them hope. Um, so that really, that both inspired us, motivated us, but it also realized we, it created an obligation for us to make sure we took care of people and gave back. And we also learned from doing it that this young man. And an old man. This old man, we could sell socks. <laughs> Right. So that that's how we got started. The growth of the business. Um, you know, we've had our ups and downs, but much of it has been based on a, a couple of things. One, the business we have is a slightly different type of business model. It's a social enterprise. So yes, we're a business, but we also have a social mission. And they're indivisible you can't separate them right and that really enables us to connect with people right. we are spreading happiness we are employing people with different abilities we are giving back how much of your staff are are, are um well today we have 29 employees and 20 of them have a differing ability right so it's more than half Part of it is to make it work, we have to run a great e-commerce business. I mean, today we're, we're going to expand, but today we only sell through our website, which means we've got to have a great website. We've got to have great selection. How many socks do we sell? We have uh, over 3,000 different kinds of socks. And you know what that means? John here is the owner of the world's largest sock store. That's right. Right? Nobody has the choices that we have. Right? Our, service, our service has to be great. Right? So we do same-day shipping. An order comes in by 3 o'clock. It's going out that day. Same and day. We, same day. And what that leads to is very happy customers. Right? So I don't know if you know about the net promoter score. Our net promoter score is a 94. That is astronomical. <laughs> we have over 29,000 online reviews, and 96% of those are five-star reviews. And we have customers that just keep coming back because you got to deliver the goods. Right. So it's <laughs> socks you can love. It's yeah. it's the giving. It, it's making it personal. So to this day, what goes in every package? I think you know, a candy. Right now, we learned the original. when we first started. What candy were we putting in the uh, packages? Uh, Hershey's Hershey Kisses. Little Hershey's Kisses. We do your bag <laughs> up with Hershey's Kisses. Everybody loved it. It smelled great. Everybody loved to talk with. Until we got the email from the woman in Florida saying, you may not want to be sending chocolate to the south when it's hot. Mm. <laughs> so now what do we put in? Uh, uh, we put in uh, Skittles. Skittles. Um, it's anything we can do to make a personal connection to our customers. So yeah, we've now spent over, shipped 360,000 orders. We've sent to 85 countries around the world. But John still does home deliveries. Right. If we get an order between our warehouse and our home, on the way home, he's knocking on doors. Anything we can to stay connected and take care of our customers. 
question. But, but giving back is important to us. It's a sign of gratitude and appreciation. We don't think it's enough to just sell stuff. So we started with that pledge to donate 5% to the Special Olympics. And why the Special Olympics? I am better Olympic athlete. What sports? I play basketball, track and field, um, soccer, and snowshoe. Plus, every year, what do you do? Every year, I get pull the plunge. He jumps in freezing water to raise money for the Special <laughs> Olympics, right? Yeah. But but here's the thing, John. You when did you start playing soccer? How old were you? Um, I I I I, I, I was five years old. And how old are you now? I'm twenty five. So he's been playing Special Olympic soccer for twenty years. Twenty years. They seeing what he has learned through Special Olympics. If there were no Special Olympics, there would be no John's Crazy Socks. It's that simple. But we've gone on, so that's our starting pledge. What we've done is we've gone on to create products that raise awareness and raise money for certain causes. So the first one we created were Down Syndrome Awareness Socks. And who, who designed those? I did. Who do they raise money for? I do raise the money for a national down the from Society and a um, local uh, group here at AACDS. But we've raised, we now have autism awareness oh, socks, awareness socks, cerebral palsy awareness yep. socks. Last spring, when the pandemic broke out, we wanted to say thank you, so we created healthcare superheroes. Socks. Right. And, and they've raised over $50,000 for frontline workers at Good Samaritan Hospital, a local hospital, and for the American Nurses Foundation. Um, so that's baked into what we do, right? We, uh, we have an autism can do scholarship, a $5,000 scholarship that we share uh, that for somebody on the autism spectrum. Um, I, you, you have to give back. You got to connect with your community. That's why I've been hearing this whole time is give, give. You, you all, you all started strong, and you all had a passion. And John had a passion. He had a drive. And instead of letting life dictate to him what he should do or what he can't do, you got he chose. That's a proud Papa moment. Well. That's a, Huge proud He's, He is a remarkable young man, and I don't get to take credit. He gets credit. But right. you have that, right? That, that's a very important thing of don't be a victim. Con control what you can control. Let go what you can't, right? So you have Down syndrome, right? I do. What do you say about Down syndrome? I have Down syndrome. Down syndrome. Never hold me back. It does not. And, and John, you know, we're, we're the business of spread and happiness. Tell me what the two things are that matter. Only matter is gratitude and do for others. And I want to tell you, it is good business to be doing for others. And the more you do for others, the better off we are, right? Yeah. So the most important thing we do is show what's possible, is show what people with a differing ability can do when you give them a chance. So Absolutely. we've created jobs, but that's not enough. We want to show the world. So we create videos and other content to share. Pre-pandemic, we held school tours coming in. Now we've moved them online. You mentioned the speaking engagements. We travel crisscross the country with speaking engagements. Right. During a pandemic, we moved them online. Um, so we wound up speaking around the world. Right? All we're like evangelists, spreading the word of showing what people can do. We do advocacy work, standing up for the rights 
of people with different abilities. And that's taken us to state capitals. It's taken us to the U.S. Capitol. We've testified twice before Congress. We've spoken at the United Nations. Um, we're really excited because one particular issue that we've been working on, that now there's finally a bill introduced in the House of Representatives to make that a reality. Um, all that rolls up to John's crazy socks. And so, <laughs> what do you measure? What matters? So the jobs created, the money given back, we have now raised $450,000 for our charity partners. And here's the really cool thing, Marcus. This Special Olympic athlete has now donated over $100,000 to the Special Olympics. How cool is that? I really like that. Right? Powerful, 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 powerful. We have one quick, we have one quick commercial break. We will be okay. right, right back. You guys stay tuned, stay incredible, stay amazed, stay back. We'll be right, right back. Good day, podcast listeners. This is your boy, Marcus Norman of Gentleman Style Podcast Show. I wanted to let you guys know that we will be rolling out a new feature and adding a join sponsor button next to the subscriber button here at the bottom of your screen. Once you click the button, it will display three membership levels. Gentleman Gentry, which is our entry level, Duke Duchess, which is our season level, and the Emperor and Empress, which is our most sophisticated level, which you will receive unique perks and benefits at each differing level and gain access to our community tab. We will also be sharing polls, upcoming events, and interviews, as well as receive feedback from our sponsors directly. Your support helps me find new and exciting guests to bring to the stage live. Well, in order to get the higher end speakers, it requires, well, some, you guessed it, money. So thank you for tuning in to my channel. And if becoming a sponsor sounds good to you, then select the join button below and choose your desired sponsor level. Let's continue to grow and serve the future of generations of men and women to come. Love you guys, bye. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Gentleman Style Podcast Show. Today we have Mr. John and Mark, and they are sharing their passion. Ms. John is sharing his story and how he is an advocate for families and disabled children, men and women and young boys and young girls across the world, and how they just shared how they overcame an injustice in the education system and didn't let society dictate their future, his future, as far as how far he could go and what difference and what impact he could make in the world. So we are here today to shine the light on Mr. John today. And I am cheering and powering and empowering you to continue to make a difference. Well, Marcus, I was just listening. We were just listening to your ad and people ought to be signing up to be emperors and empresses because we got to power you. We got to give you fuel to keep going. <laughs> it's very cool what you're doing. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. And speaking of empowering, uh, we have a VIP sponsor on the show, Miss Erica. Thank you oh. for your contribution. Thank you for your help. Um, your help allows me to continue to find empowerful, powerful guests and continue to advocate on behalf of John and, and get the message and get their word out. So thank you for your contribution. It helps me work harder. Thank you so much. So, Mr. John, what are some you shared your story and you shared what inspired you um and to 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 overcome and start the your sock um crazy sock company. Um what obstacles did you guys have to overcome in getting started? What what things were in the way that prevented you or tried to block you from getting started? Um when you get started uh well, listen, what we faced were the same challenges any startup faces. Financing, right? We were bootstrapping. How could we make that go? And 
Um, the overall story is very positive, but lots of ups and downs. Um, you know, we uh, we came close to going out of business. Wow. And we were very fortunate uh, because we didn't have financing. I mean, our, our first two years were very successful and we were profitable. And at the end of the year, I'd say to my accountant, if we were so profitable, how come I have no money? <laughs> he said, Mark, let's go look in your warehouse. You see all that inventory? That's your profit. Um, hmm. But we're very fortunate. I think this is an important thing to know, that you don't have to be alone. you got to get the right team and the right people with you. And so we were able to find a strategic partner to work with us, a third generation family business that manufactured socks. And they made socks for department stores and brand names and are much larger than us. Um, but there was a good fit there because we sold directly to consumer. We had a brand of our own and we shared values. You know, that's really important of how you treat people, how you work with people you work with the community um so you know that was important and you try things we have a, an aesthetic and approach that says ready fire aim you know know what you want to do and go take action don't wait until it's perfect uh, so you know what are we overcoming how how can you grow with limited finance we're a very seasonal business. Have you seen the TV show Game of Thrones? Yes. In that show, they talk all the time. Winter is coming. Well, for us, summer is coming. Nobody buys socks in the summer. Right? <laughs> but how do you deal with that? And yet, at the end of the year, we do 40% of our business in six weeks. Wow. So how do you work for the full year and have that? That's a challenge. And how do we grow? How do we continue to connect with people, um, share our mission, and get to a larger community? Um, yes. So they're all those, you know, those challenge. Um, you know, I see Erica made a notion. You know, team is really important. Getting the right people on your team and getting everybody to be rowing in the right, in the same direction. Um, mm. Those are challenges we face. Uh, we don't think about high, you know, hiring people with different abilities. That's not a challenge. That's a benefit and a blessing. Yes, that's true. And you're so right. You are so right. You do something unique. Um, and I think it's very important that you, if you can speak on it, you have very happy customers. You have very, very happy customers. And what's your secret? Are you able to share? You, ha you also have a high repurchase rate. Right. How do you do that? What's your well, secret? Here, I can share what we do. There are no shortcuts. There's no easy answer. And, you know, you're a man of faith. This um it may be the one word is believe so we start what's our mission uh, it's been happening and everything we do is judged by that mission so here's an example you think of customer service i i limit i think of it more as customer response how do you respond when customers contact you well, you've heard the old line, the customer is always right. right. Nonsense. But <laughs> customer can be dead wrong. But we're not in the business of being right. Mm. We're in the business of spreading happiness. So what does that mean? We call the people that respond to our customers, we call them happiness creators. We don't time any phone calls. We don't tell them what, you know, do this, don't do, do that. We don't micromanage. We, they believe in the mission. They believe in what we're doing. We give them the right tools, and we say, go make the customers happy. Everybody knows they can spend up to $200 on any customer to make that customer happy. So if you buy from us, we have a guarantee. We're spreading happiness. 
You're not happy. We refund your money. No questions asked up to a year later. Wow. No we give out refunds. We send extra socks, anything we can to make customers happy. So one very important metric for e-commerce businesses is your return rate. What percentage of your revenue do you have to refund? Ours is 0.5% of our revenue. So we give out drop of a hat, but we take care of our customers. You know, here's, here's another couple of ways. And it's all small details. Um, so we put candy in every package. Yep, but Skittles. We, we also sell diabetic socks. And one day, one of our happiness packers, that's what we call our packers, comes and says, this doesn't make sense. People are buying diabetic socks and we're sending them candy. So <laughs> now we pay attention. And if you buy diabetic socks, we will send you sugar-free candy. Sugar-free. Um, you know, here's another one. We have a subscription service. We have a sock of the month club. We talk to, we're always trying to figure out how can we get better. We talk to other businesses and they tell us, here's what you should do. You should make the default an automatic renewal so that if somebody gets it and they don't cancel the subscription, it automatically renews. So okay. magazines do this all the time. Lots of people do this. It will make you more money. But we look at that and say, but I, as a customer, hate that. So we're not going to do that. We're going to take care of our customers. Right? It's, right? So when you ask, how do you get those happy customers? It starts with a real commitment. And you have to believe. And you've got to get everybody in the organization believing. And when they do... It then makes itself manifest in everything you do. Makes sense. Makes sense. You guys have, John has testified, you all have testified before Congress to make changes and impact um, across the world. Are you able to share, um, you shared one of them, that there is a new problem, there's been a, existing problem of trying to push children out of the education system um, too early or too soon. Well, we can um, talk about some of the issues that we yeah. work on, some very specific ones. For three years now, we have been working yeah. to um, eliminate, uh, to repeal what's known as the sub-minimum wage. And Marcus, I'll dive a little into the weeds here. But the Fair Labor Standard Act of 1938 is a great piece of American legislation. It created the minimum wage. It created the 40-hour work week. It eliminated childhood labor. Wonderful things. But Section 14C allows employers to pay somebody with a disability less than minimum wage. It's a sub-minimum wage. Really? There are people working in this country being paid five cents an hour. What? Now, in That's 1938, terrible. that might have been acceptable. It is not acceptable today. So we have been working with many others and knocking on doors and testifying and speaking to eliminate that. You know, that's one example. Another example, we are um, working in every state and at the federal level, and there's good success, to pass a law to make it illegal to discriminate against somebody with a disability on organ transplant list. Because there are cases where, you know, you get on the list and you're waiting, and then, oh, you have a disability, we put you at the bottom of the list again. Wow. That's not right. That's not right. Um, something that we just had success on. Again, th this may sound a little technical. There are special savings accounts 
available to people with a differing with a disability called able accounts. And while they're important, uh, why, why they're important is a person with a disability can put money in that account and that money is shielded when you do a benefit calculation for SSI or Medicaid. So it enables you to hold on to more of your money. So all we're asking is that employers be allowed to contribute to ABLE accounts the same way they do to 401ks. But that's going to take a change in law. So we just had that introduced um, in the House by two members of the Ways and Means Committee, um, a Republican and a Democrat. And we've been working with Tom Swazi, who happens to be our local congressman, to get that introduced. Um, we're not alone. There are others doing that. Like we're, we are part of the CEO Commission on Employee Employment Disability, um, but it's working to make those changes. And and here's how we go. Or here's how we think. We're incredibly fortunate to have the platform we have. You have us on your show. How wonderful! That creates an obligation for us. So that if we have that opportunity, as we did Friday, to meet with the Kennedy Foundation, we have to speak up. Uh, I'll give you, you know, it's, we told you before, I think it was before we got on air, that John had to be hospitalized with the COVID virus. Right. Well, that was scary. important to us to go back to that hospital and say thank you to all the staff. So we went and we had... Um, we gave out socks to everybody. But we also knew that because of the recognition we have, we could create a media event doing that. And in doing so, we could highlight the risk that people with Down syndrome face, that they're 10 times more likely to die from the virus. And we could highlight the good thing our local hospital did of letting me stay with John the whole time and urge other hospitals. So you take that platform, right? But now it's an obligation to use it to do something positive. Uh, I'll give you a kind of a fun example, political example of that. And we're not about politics, but we were down one day on Capitol Hill. We were planned to be meeting with uh, members of Congress. And we had shared that on social media. So a customer from Houston called the office and said, are they really at the Capitol? Because my mother works at the Capitol and is a big fan of John's and would like to meet John. Is that possible? And our colleague said, sure, just here's Mark's cell phone, text him the contact information, and I'm sure he'll reach out to your mother. Who was mom? Nancy Pelosi. What? So we get an audience with Nancy Pelosi. Um, now, you know, here's something. We work with a lot of elected officials. We're in a bad way in this country. We vilify people. And our elected officials, we turn into like villains or heroes. And we forget their humanity. So I don't care where you are in the political spectrum. Nancy Pelosi at heart, at the end of the day, she's an Italian grandmother from San Francisco. Right. She's loving to see John. And when we get in to meet with her, she takes out, uh, John, um, a little backstory, had become sock buddies, if you will, friends <laughs> with former President Bush, George H.W. Bush. What? He sent him... They, you know, that's a different story. But all it was was we sent him socks because we saw he liked crazy socks. We sent him socks. We sent him more socks. He called his office called up and said the president loves him. Can we get more? He sent John socks back and forth like yeah. that. That's so good. At when Mrs. Bush passed away, the office called. His office called and said the president and her family want to wear socks to honor Mrs. Bush. We sent them book socks. The day of her funeral, he wore those, and his only communication with the outside world was to tweet out a picture of his socks. 
right? So there was this tight bond. So now Nancy Pelosi takes out and shows those pictures of her with George Bush and socks she gave George Bush. It's really wonderful and warm. And we get photos. Uh, you know, everybody's taking photographs. But you see, we have this opportunity, and now that creates an obligation. So while well, everything's nice, it's, but Ms. Pelosi, we have to talk to you about some issues. We have to repeal Section 14C and eliminate the subminimum wage. And we have to find a way so that like many of our employees, people are not forced to choose between work and their benefits, that people with disability can work more hours, earn more money, and still keep their Medicaid, because everybody's better off, right? right? So it's very nice that we you showed us these pictures and we're taking photos and you're very sweet to John, but we got to talk about this, right? Absolutely. And Absolutely. We're very fortunate like that. You guys are blessed. We have a question from our VIP sponsor of the show, Miss Erica. She says, do you make business logo socks? We make beautiful socks for businesses. In fact, we've just rolled out our business to business services, but we have made custom socks with logos, with pictures, with names. We've made them for Google, for Microsoft, for Ernst & Young, for Campbell's, for Bank of America and, and countless other corporations, but we've also made them for Sweet 16 parties and we've made them for weddings. Uh, Meredith Vieira, uh, the TV host, made custom socks for her son's wedding. Um, we've made them for you know uh, charity organizations that um, sell them uh, to raise money or give them to their donors. So. We absolutely do. And you go to our website, you'll see the business services. We also do custom uh, like bulk orders and concierge service. Something we're doing for some businesses. Um, we just signed up another one the other day. We put together custom boxes with custom socks and other items in it that they send to new customers. So we take care of ordering everything making the boxes and handling all the fulfillment. All they do is send us the name and the address and we ship it to them. Um, so we do that. We created, during the pandemic, we created a different type of fundraising program, a charity fundraising program where if you have a charity, Marcus, we give you a charity code. You give that to your supporters. They come to our store and they buy something. They're going to buy great things for themselves or to give as gifts. And when they enter that charity code, that customer gets a free gift and 10% from that sale goes to the charity. So PTAs have been loving that. You know, we've had Girl Scout troops, Boy Scout troops, um, because it's a low cost, no risk way to raise money. Um, it is. It is. We have one more quick commercial break, here, guys. Don't stay. Sure. Stay tuned. Stay with us. We'll be right, right back. Are you a local business looking to offer your customers easy access to cash without having to travel miles? We're here to help. At Norman Legacy Investments, we provide free ATMs with free installation that provide a suitable investment for your business. Even better, we offer you some profit sharing and handle everything from start to finish. Just reach out to us today to schedule a free consultation. Gentlemen, this is impactful. impactful. My last tip, my last question for you guys, what advice would you say to the young man, the young woman out in the audience watching this who who feels beat down, who feels like there's no help, no assistance, and wants to give up and their back is against the wall? What would you say to that young boy or young girl? Well, I'd tell them one, I, you know, I'll, I'll go first and then you go, okay? Okay. I, I would tell them you're not alone. That one 
take a breath. However old you are, you could be 12, you could be 20, you could be 70. All of the days of your life have carried you to that moment and they will carry you forward. You're not alone. Look around. There are people who love and care for you. Let them know. Love that. Do you, do you have something? What advice do you give people? My advice, follow your heart. Follow your dreams. Work hard. So you can do. That's pretty good advice, buddy. I love that. I love that. Follow your heart, follow your dreams, and don't give up. I, I love that. You guys have been powerful. You guys have been impactful. Thank you for joining me on the Gentleman Style Podcast Show. You all have served me, and thank you so much for giving back. And thank you for having a heart for those that this goes without saying. I want to say this to you publicly. Don't ever give up. Don't ever quit. We need you. We need you. The world needs yeah. you. So please we, don't give up on us. We have learned every single person has their own beauty. And if we can just pause, we can see the beauty. Everybody has a story to tell that we need to hear. And everybody has an ability and a strength that's unique to them that we all need. So if we can just look at other people, listen, and appreciate. We'll all be better off. Amen. Amen. That's so true. It's so true. Thank you for saying that. Thank you for saying that. Thank you, my audience, for tuning in to the Gentleman Style Podcast Show. I hope this message helps. I hope this helped you. This definitely helped me, y'all. And I want to say this again. Don't give up. You guys in the audience watching this, don't give up. You are necessary. You are needed. Be kind, be loving, and always, always care for others. I hope this message serves you. I hope Mr. John, Mr. Mark will bless me with an opportunity as they grow in the future to be back on the show in the future. And God bless you too. Don't quit. Mark, we, Marcus would love to come back on anytime you want us. And John. Yes. If people want to get great socks, where can they get them? At johnscrazysocks.com. There you go. John's Crazy Socks. He can be found on most social media, all social media platforms. He even has a TikTok, y'all. So check him out on Instagram, John's Crazy Socks. Their YouTube channel at John's Crazy Socks. And Twitter at, you guessed it, John's Crazy Socks. <laughs> love it, love it, love it. Support, connect, grow with them, and stay with them. These gentlemen are impactful, and I love the love. Yes, powerful, powerful. You guys have been a blessing to me. Thank you for joining me. You guys have a great day. Love you guys. Bye. Thank you.